Oh, oh this, isn't, this is tricky enough now. Uh, I haven't left it easy for you. Then again, it is Mr. John B, the man with all the experience. So welcome back to Finnegan's Farm and welcome back to the YouTube channel. So before we get started on this week's video, I just want to apologise for last week's video. The sound for some reason um, was 10 seconds behind the video clip on the TV only uh, for the bit on the fast track. It was actually Luke Healy at football training. I was like, oh, I have a bone to pick with you. And I was kind of like, hey, Luke, what's wrong? And he goes, last week's video, the sound wasn't right in it. And I was like, why, what was up? He said, on the TV or something. Um, it was like 10 seconds behind the actual video clip, so look, I went home and watched it, it actually was my fault. Don't really know how it done it, but yeah, I'm going to have to take the blame on it, so sorry about that. As everyone knows, if you're from Ireland, this week has been a bit weird. There's been snow, there's been some of rain, and there's also been sunshine at the start of the week, so it's been hard to deal with, but there's nothing we can do about it. And with everything going on this week, we also got some very bad news, so... We have to go over to Jack now and we'll explain what happened. Can we make some uh, snowballs here? Hoping to find my intended target. Oh, he's looking at me. Yeah, don't make eye contact. Come on. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no good, no good. So anyone that was been on the ball would know that like this time last year we had our hair test. And as you can see from my face, it didn't go to plan. We unfortunately went down with TV there yesterday. Yeah. Bad no day. Idea. Bad day for the parish. I couldn't even take out the camera, it was that bad. It was number one, rain and that hard that I actually got water damage in my phone and it in my pocket because the water seeped through. Snowing and Snow wind and, and... Like poor here on the vet's hands, he was nearly trying to warm them up, they were frozen on him. But, uh, yeah, and then obviously we didn't get good news either, so it didn't help the situation. No, it's fairly disheartening. Yeah. Like you work hard all year to ensure that you're keeping all your main diseases and viruses out, and you do a good job with that. Yeah. And then the one thing you can't prevent comes in and kicks you back down the road. Yeah. And it wouldn't happen to bad cows. It wouldn't happen to bad cows. There's all the good cows. Super cows, and yeah. they're probably our best breeding cows. There's a roney cow in there now, and money probably wouldn't buy her but yeah. look that's life that's farming it's all about how you respond and bounce back to a bad situation and, and that's what we're going to have to do a closed herd like w we wouldn't be buying and selling no we wouldn't so. be bringing it into the herd like it's so it has to be it has to be either wildlife or yeah I don't, I don't I don't know like it's not it's a hard one to call and hope. then like we'd have like we have the say our 25 cows with each bull in different different farms, farms like but it wasn't even that it was from no it wasn't it wasn't that you say oh look that herd of cows that were there over the road it was all them it was yeah. scattered all around the place all around so that leaves it even more difficult for us because we have to try pinpoint where pinpoint we can stop it exactly but, but it's, oh, it's hard to prevent um, and then yeah and then Kieran was saying like you might get free the next test and then the next one might you could be locked up it, yeah. could go on, it could go on and on for a while yeah but. and then you hear of lads that would be free and then I think it's like a thirty percent chance that you get it again within the next three years. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, um, all we can do is pray and fingers crossed, don't it? Yeah, we're going to put a few procedures in place and we're going to keep us posted on what we do because it's common enough. It's not as if yeah, like yeah. we're the only family. No, no, no. It happens us today and it happens someone else tomorrow. Exactly. That's that's it. And like, it's actually high enough in our area it seems to be popular yeah it's there because the, the test we got now is one of the strictest tests you can be and they only put that in place um if the area you're in there's high cases of tb yeah. around you so. so yeah it's not good but, but we'll get that we'll, we'll sort it out we'll and then the calves happen. obviously have to be taken away from the cows and then we have to Feed them. feed them calves so I mean it'd be interesting to see how we go like um, oh, this land up here there'd be deer on it so that could be yeah that could be a have. part of our problem too because actually when we were out fencing we could do a lot of head scratch and saying Jesus how, how, like, did, how did them posts break? be break and wire down and everything but you'd see them there during the summer and even in the winter to be out grazing in the fields behind, there yeah there is there's plenty of woodland there yeah. and um, they are a main carrier of TB, but look, it could be a badger eater, a badger goes for a drink and the drinker, yeah, and one cow gets yeah. it, and as t TB develops, animals can near spread it, cattle can near spread it themselves it if does, it's old yeah. TB. So, um, look, it's not too bad. It could have happened when we were in the middle of calf, and what, we left five yeah, cows left calf yeah, now. Yeah, that's all we've left. So. All left, so thank God that was went very well this year. So, yeah. so we try aim to have the test kind of win our last 
cows, cows calves, calves so then them calves are tested for TB and yeah, they're all okay. They can be sold then and then when it's 12 the other way around, it's Yeah, it's problem. messy, it's messy. But we might just have to move the tests now at this time of year is not an ideal time. But Yeah, it, but in the middle of summer now it'll probably, well, hopefully it'll work out it's the middle of summer and then it's not as bad. Kind it's of not as bad then, at least if you do go down, you're not worrying about, ca at least the calves might be weighing then, you're not yeah. worrying trying the to find milk for them. The only problem is the cows are calves, it was actually not an ideal time for it. No, them, it's not, no, no. We'll, uh, we'll just have to deal with it. And yeah, Look, we'll get out of hard first and then we'll worry yeah, about it. Yeah, then we worry about it. And even that, you have a bit of bedding to a do. A bit of bedding to do, yeah. And then feed, and that's kind of everything sorted up here then, isn't it? Everything sorted. Make sure take, they're not take, take the weekend off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm on this weekend. Jack yeah. says, well, he doesn't have it off. He's no, home. more of work. Course. I'd rather be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather be here. <laughs> Let's go home and have the father. What, you're moving bulls and stuff, is it? I'm bringing a bull, a pedigree limousine bull, down to um, Sean sale down in Elfin and Roscommon. Irish limousine society are having a sale down there, so bring him down and show him around and hopefully yeah. get a good price from him. Right, right. we better keep going. Yeah. Good luck. So our dirt this week is, we had two sections in a week. We haven't had a section since last year. We've calved 110 cows without a section, or barely even pulling them with a jack. And then this poor heifer, Alex, I'm going to give you a shout out here. Alex the one that told me just to, he put her in the pen and he said, I just said I'd check her after. And that was grand, but all that was coming was a head. And when I felt the feet, I was like, just this big calf. Cut and flip the feet, Joe came down. And we said, oh, we'll just get the vet to do it. Experience. And yeah, vet came down, had the feet flipped in 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Me trying there for about half an hour. Yeah, all went well, thank God. Uh, poor heifer though, it's not nice to do to her, but you kind of just have to go with the section because if you don't and you pull the calf, you could end up losing both. So at least this way, both survived. I know it's not ideal for the... Heifer. Another thing that's happened on the farm this week is we're spreading a bit of fertiliser. So, so I got the honour of bringing the 250 or over, a few bags of fertiliser and the bronze. So yeah, we're spreading a bit of money today. <laughs> Get the scan, get the scan. It is Mr. John B, the man with all the experience. Oh my God. You wouldn't see that on the radio. No, you'd never see that on the radio. No. Nope. So we're loading Darren Hubble here, who's the 6R175 with the raunch spreader on. Now normally it's not Darren, normally Alan does do that. Alan, yeah, he was... Uh, he was I, he took a bit of a holiday this morning. Well, he took, yeah, he must, he was a bit late coming in. Yeah, yeah, he must have slept it in. Must have been up late last Darren night. Darren had to come, like, uh, Darren was in early, like. And uh, that uh, never happened. No. You had the, you had the trailers loaded for the lads and all. Yeah, 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 last night there. Yeah, a lot of money in them bags as well. Price of it now. Yeah. If anyone wants to give us a free fertilizer, yeah. we'll give you a shout out, obviously. 50 yeah. tonne to do, like. 50 tonne. <laughs> Grand, it covers. Darren, making sure he gets it all. Oh, there's a bag gone. Oh, John. Oh, jeez. not. If you didn't drop a full bag, it'd be a bit different. I'm now in with the famous Darren Hubble. So were you run out the last time? We run out down here. So you can see where the green and where the grey is, obviously, the bit you haven't done. Yeah, the spread will start now when I come down here and just start going green again then. So you don't even need to turn it on where you'd no, stop the last one, no. Throw on the PTO and throw the spreader on and then it does it all automatically. Some job. There it is now. And out she comes. So spreading money today. I mean, 10, 7, 25, 11, isn't it? 11, 25, then. Yeah. Joe's money, my friend. Joe's money, yeah. And do you have auto steering this, sir? Yeah. But sure, the tram lines are there. The no tram lines in the same and stuff, so I use the auto steer on the... Yeah, but with you sold one. this with the Lemkin. Sold this one with the Lemkin, yeah. Just to see, is there any difference? And well, what's your thoughts on it? You Not really, yeah. I prefer the Lemkin. Yeah, though, yeah. Really. That's just, that's but that. is that because you're used to it, or just it's a better used setup? used to it, and you know, the sumo leaves a nice gap between the rows, but then it should tiller out maybe a little bit better than the Lemkin. Yeah. Or up in the road, no one's in that until it's harvested like you can see there i'll show you this is the lemkin and then that's just compared to the sumo the comparison the tillerant it's a bit of a gap between them but hopefully it should even out oh watch the pole you the have to fold up around that when you're spraying them 
There's more chance now of John B spraying than me this year. Don't know which is the worst. <laughs> so what ton are you putting out to the acre? Uh, three and a half bags an acre. Ten, seven, twenty-five. Mm. Should give it a good start now. It's fairly green, It's green. There's a few spots of yellow when I put the drone up, but it, in not fairness, it's not bad now compared to some of them. Greens here last year, kind of. Helped them. Yeah. Well, people would be asking me, like, why do we have such a small spreader for all the acres that we'd be spreading? Oh, wait. Yeah, you could go with a big breed up, but you wouldn't get out this time of year with it. Well, you would, but you'd mark. You Other years you would. And, oh, it would be an awful lot handy on both threading, but... Probably we, we, some, some we're fairly used to this and then... Yeah, like we're kind of set up for that spread on ours. It, a lot it of works very, it works very well for us. It all works for well. Oh, a bulk spread would be nice for any of you. Fair play was, fair play is a bit of sports for yeah, yeah, because you're putting on an awful lot more. Oh, oh, oh. We'll get Alex to get out and pick that, will we? Send him down here. Well, it's told to pick him and he didn't pick him. <laughs> you don't seem like you're picking the same speed as you're driving. Eh, uh, oh, you just said that whatever the spread I can do, the spread I can only go about 13 or 14 k there, but yeah. the volume of stuff that's going on it. So. But as you slow down. Oh, it'll, it'll follow your speed. Yeah, yeah, there, it'll so. vary to whatever so you are. It's very. The spread out is varied off the speed that the top gun has given it. Some job, isn't it? Yeah, great job. But there's last year's tramlines from the beans. And I just went into the field and they come up automatically. So and even your boundary and all were set? The whole lot. Even the sumo there with no tramlines, I... Um, your tramlines are in it already? I could always stay around the outside the head and like... No, it just follows it. Just instead of going around the boundary every year and then setting up your tram lines, yeah, you're just yeah, in it. Saves any of that. And then at least yeah. they're in the same spot every year that you're not compacting different ground. Yeah, tram lines in the one spot. And why doesn't the sumo fit in tram lines? It's only three metres wide, you see. So it won't work out for 28 metres. So you just run the tram line off and just put it in with them at the top one. Very good, very good. When we go back to the yard, it the track that was by the workshop or was outside the workshop, it should connect to the Wi Fi tap. And then when the, another top one goes by the and it connects to the tap, the stuff should go to the other top on the screen then without having to use USB. That's a new update start coming. It's getting very technical, but we're enjoying it. It's a bit too much fun. Handy. Well, it's handy for you because yeah, you don't have to steer or nothing. You don't. Yeah. Do Everyone knows you as Hubble 240 from the TikTok, so you look a bit different now. No, no one, no, no one recognises no you. Recognizing you, especially the John Deere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, he refuses to swear John Deere. I think he's JCB. <laughs> he's Fent. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like <laughs> Unreal. So, in addition to our Saturday videos, we're going to do a birthday mention to all our viewers. So, if you have a birthday. Put it in the comments what day it is, give me your age and where you're from and I'll give you a shout out uh, the, ne the following week. To give away our first birthday, we have a one mention so far, this is what started it, is... Oh, Brucey, come here, come here. <laughs> so Bruce actually turns four today. The three birthdays that we have this week are, I'm just gonna blow up the balloon now, the names are on the balloon. Once it doesn't go pop. <laughs> so we've Bruce from Finnegan's as four. We've Harry Dunn from Carlin Sound, who's 24. And we've William Oatley from Calair, who's 36. So happy birthday, lads. And anyone else that has a birthday, put in the comments there, and we'll put it up for next. <coughs> so thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, get your birthday wishes in. And yeah, I know we got bad news this week, but sure, next week might be better. So see you all next week. Good luck. Mm -hmm.